Hello tipsers and tricksters, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another vintage tips and tricks video. If you're new to my channel, my name is B. I'm a vintage glamour enthusiast and musician. I make vintage beauty and style videos with a little bit of sustainability, veganism and lifestyle thrown in for good measure. So if that sounds like your jam, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know all my videos come out. Hello from Australia. I am finally back home visiting my family after a really long time thanks to the pandemic. So. That is a huge relief and I'm having such a wonderful time just catching up with them and, you know, checking on them and being back in my hometown. So, yeah, if there's a big grin on my face through this whole video, that is why. <laughs> but today I wanted to show you guys some vintage items that I picked up while I'm here. Some are from the local thrift stores and some are some more family heirloom pieces that uh, were awaiting me upon my arrival. So without further ado, let's get into it. What have you got if you haven't got, haven't got love? I have two big bags here to show you today. I'm going to run through the pieces and also try them on for you so you can see what they look like on. I haven't tried them on yet, so I don't know if they're going to fit, but I will do my best to model them for you guys. I think I'll start with my op shop finds. So... I grabbed these, I think 1970s shoes. They've definitely got 40s vibes to them by the shape of the front section and how high they come up and even the heel, but they're not quite the right shape for 40s and they're in really good condition. So I'm pretty sure they are 70s does 40s, but they're in gray, which I thought is either a good color or perhaps an easy color for me to paint if I decide I want a different colored pair of shoes. Cause I'm really looking for brown ones, but I think gray would be much easier to paint over than black, I'm assuming. So that may be an upcoming video. In the jewelry cabinet of a thrift store, mostly with modern stuff in it, I spotted this darling little 1950s Diamante necklace. It's actually a choker. When I got it home and tried it on, I saw that. But I just thought it was quite unusual because it's got yellow stones in it. Um, most of the ones I've seen here in Oz and that I have in my collection are just plain uh, Diamante stones in like a clear or sort of more sort of white tint but I just thought the yellow was really lovely and it just immediately stood out to me as a true 50s piece so I was really really excited to nab this and I think it was all of eight Australian dollars. I certainly wasn't planning on buying anything like the next piece because it's a bit difficult to transport and it makes my luggage heavy but I couldn't pass up this little gem that I saw in the cabinet at the first place that I went to so hopeless but it is a soapstone set like a vanity set it's absolutely beautiful in this mixed sort of pale salmony pink and white soapstone with a little white or bone colored carvings on it and it has a matching little pot as well I think it's probably a powder pot but it didn't have a puff or anything with it it's still got its price sticker on it <laughs> gently take that off Yes, here is the little matching pot, absolutely beautiful. And again, with a little lid, as you can see, I'd say it was probably a powder pot, maybe jewelry or something, but it is quite large. So I imagine probably a powder pot with a puff at some point in it, but just really pretty. It does need a little bit of cleaning up. You can see there's a bit of dirt and dust in the carving, but it was one of those pieces that I was no way I was going to leave it behind because I knew I probably wasn't ever going to see something like this again, at least in Australia and the UK. This is not a true vintage piece, but is very similar to some true vintage bags that I have been drooling over for years. My mum picked this up and showed it to me and I immediately was like, I'm going to have to get that. Uh, absolutely stunning and very much looks like the real deal until you open it up and you realise that the lining and everything is very, very new. So I nabbed this too. The real ones are quite expensive. I've never come across one that was a particularly bargain price. So I'm quite happy having a reproduction one. This next piece is so special. I spotted this again in that first op shop that I got. It was actually a vintage store, but it had a lot of kind of, I guess, 80s, 90s, and noughties vintage. But my mum actually got this off the rack and it is a 1950s wedding dress. I wondered if by the neckline, if it wasn't early 60s, but I would say by the fastenings and the age of the lace and the lace flowers that it is indeed a 1950s one. I'd probably say early 50s. It does have a metal zip in the side with hooks and eyes all down there. And these flowers and the lace and everything seem much earlier than the 1960s. So it's really pretty. I will try and fit into this one, but it's absolutely stunning. 
I'm used to seeing 1950s wedding dresses in satin, so this was really special, has a train and everything down the back, so I am super excited to try this on and see if it will fit. And if it doesn't, I will sell it on to somebody else who's looking for a beautiful vintage lace wedding dress. So they're the pieces that I found in the local thrift stores here in Victor Harbour or the Victor Harbour area. I'm going to move on to the pieces that were waiting for me on my bed. They were sent over by my auntie from Interstate and I believe they belonged to my grandmother. And I believe a couple of the pieces are made by her just from the way that the inside is finished. She had a habit of not leaving any seam allowance because she made things to fit herself. So, you know, she knew her measurements and she made it exactly. And I think probably was using up materials and things as well. So she didn't have much sort of leeway to work with. I just really can easily recognize her sort of sewing style. So I'm quite confident that pieces are ones that she made herself. The first one is this beautiful 1950s flower full length gown. It's got this beautiful big collar on it with the big lapels, a little nipped in waist and it's quite narrow through the hips and then slowly goes out into a uh, long not full skirt, like it's actually quite, I mean, it's still, um, it's not like a pencil skirt, but it is kind of like a cross between a 40s and a 50s silhouette. So I would say early 50s on this one, despite at first when I was pulling it out, I thought maybe it was a 60s dress, but once again, I think it's early 50s. Also based on the other items that my grandma made at the time, she did sort of do a lot of her own style of things where you could sort of tell the era by, you know, the finishings that she used and stuff, but she kind of sometimes put elements together that you wouldn't necessarily expect from certain decades because she was very creative and quite a great seamstress and so she put her own flair on things. This is the other piece that I believe that she made. It is a gorgeous 1950s evening dress in this amazing satin. I'm not great with the names of uh, particular materials so I'm sure someone can tell me exactly what type of material this is but it is rustly and it does shine black and uh, red in the light or burgundy in the light as you can see hopefully you can pick it up on the camera there I love the neckline on this and the sleeves. It's got beautiful rouging detail around the waist here and it is Just below the knee. I really hope this fits I would love to perform in this because it is just stunning and under stage lights It's going to look absolutely amazing I don't believe my grandma made this last piece just because of the finishings inside. I think it's probably shop bought and it does have just a little tag that has a W on it. It has no sizing or label to speak of, but it does have a little teeny weeny tag with a W and it has things like the brass strap fasteners. The finishings on the inside are all extremely polished and it has plenty of seam allowance and hem, which is not something that my grandma tended to do. So I'm pretty sure this is a shop bought piece, but it again is absolutely stunning. It's another one in that silk that shimmers in two different colors. I could be wrong that it's silk, but you know, feel free to correct me down below if you are a seamstress and or you know more about vintage fabrics than me. But I believe this is a 60s one based on the shape of the bodice and also the length of the dress. And it's got almost that sort of, it's not a pencil skirt, but it's got almost a tulipy shaped skirt to it. So I'll show you in the cutaway, but yes. And it has this beautiful embossed flower pattern all over it. So absolutely stunning. So guys, that is the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video and any suggestions for future videos. You can always join my Patreon. I put lots of extra content out over there as well as the curated vintage finds perk. Here are some of the videos that I've put out exclusively for my patrons. Come and follow me on my Instagram. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.